Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the brand new Tier 7 Japanese light cruiser, the Blazing Dread, aka Suja on Crack. <laughs> So, with that being said, let's look at our commander. Now, I know that not everybody runs Azure Lane Otago. A lot of you guys ain't been around long enough for Azure Lane Otago. And she's never coming back, so just get that out of your head. Thank God there aren't more people with this commander. Because this commander makes this ship stupid as f okay? <laughs> How they haven't nerfed this commander after all this time is beyond me. But whatever. It is what it is. Let's look at it. Azure Lane Otago is our current commander. We have uh, Death From Below as her torpedo detectability. Nobody cares about that. That's not why you take Azure Lane Otago. We are running Nikolai Kuznetsov for extra range, and we're running Francesco Membelli for the faster reload. We also have Beyond Range, Arsonist. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, you get an extra 8% chance to set fires with this build. Okay on top of what you already have instead of what you would get which is three percent on any other commander this is what makes this commander so stupid all right this is busted as f okay why because cruisers already have a stupid high fire chance for the amount of shells that they send down range this makes it that much worse eight percent chance of extra fires then we have punch through because you know you don't use it a lot but when you do need the ap it comes in real handy and then, of course, fixated and refill station, okay? There is no fully packed on this commander. Now, for those of you running free-to-play builds, I understand. If we take a look at the free-to-play commanders, personally, I would go with Isoroku Yamamoto. But if you go with uh, Genichi Makawa, I understand that one as well. But Isoroku, whoops. Isoroko Yamamoto is going to have, I mean, I'd still recommend having Nikolai Kuznetsov and you can go with extra gun traverse speed here with Einstein uh, because these guns are very slow turning and if you're in a uh, situation where you need to be jiggy with it trying to dodge shells because trust me, you do not want to get hit with this ship, right? Uh, but if you need to dodge, you're going to struggle to keep these guns on target. Despite it being a light cruiser, the guns do not turn very well. So, But I still recommend having uh, the, um, whatchamacallit, the, the reload. So Mimbelli comes in handy, okay? Uh, now, beyond range, igniter. Again, this is a 3% chance instead of the 8% chance that we get with the other build. So you lose out on 5%, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you're throwing as many shells down range as you are in this ship... It, it adds up real quick. Punch through, fixated, and then we run fully packed on this build, which gives you an extra heal and an extra smoke screen, which comes in handy. But you could also run this if you want. Uh, again, refill station, going to get you that faster reload. Uh, you'll have a eight second reload if you if you do everything right. And like I said, it, that's running uh, Membelli as well. But that's my suggestion if you're running a free-to-play build. Um, depends on your commanders and your levels and whatnot, but that, that's what I would recommend if you have a free-to-play commander. Uh, but personally, if you have Azure Lane Otago, you simply run Azure Lane Otago on every every Japanese cruiser. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the way it... I don't come up with the rules, okay? I just, I just go by them. Now, let's get into the actual, like, equipment. We have Aiming Systems Mod 1 to get these guns a little bit more accurate. They're not the most accurate guns in the world, but they are accurate enough. So if you wanted to pull this and go for the traverse speed, it's totally understandable. Uh, you don't necessarily need it. You could go with the accuracy by volume and be like, okay, I'm going to land enough shells. I don't need to be stupid accurate. But, again... Having a little bit of traverse speed for those moments where you got to get jiggy with it. This is a kiting cruiser, okay? This is not your brawling cruisers. Yes, it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with cru uh, other cruisers and stuff if you have to, but this is a kiting cruiser, just like almost every other Japanese cruiser, okay? So don't get it twisted. We are running propulsion mod as well. Uh, you could go steering gears, but honestly, the steering gears aren't the problem of these ships. Like, these ships turn relatively quickly. You don't need to buff the steering at all. I think it comes with a base of like 5.3 second rudder shift or something like that. So you don't need the extra steering. Uh, being able to speed up and slow down, especially given the fact that this thing has a gimmick. Yes, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, 
going from stopped to started and going up to full power comes in real handy, okay? Concealment, obviously, for those moments where you need to get up close and personal, helping get rid of destroyers, that sort of thing. And then, of course, we are running the, the epic main battery mod 3, which allows us for every 30,000 damage to get a boost to our reload team, or reload uh, time. But it does, again, hurt your traverse speed, which is already suffering from uh, our... Um, slow traverse to begin with okay so keep that in mind now with all of that being said let's get into why this ship is so incredibly stupidly broken and i'm gonna give you guys a caveat i've only played one game in this all right one fucking game but that's all I need to understand what this ship is about, okay? We already know what the Suja is, and this is literally a Suja on crack, okay? It's Suja incredibly busted for what it is. It's a light cruiser that is absolutely insane with Azure Lane Otago, and this is Suja on crack, period. There is no other way to put it, all right? So we, we aren't going to run defensive AA because we need the sonar because you are going to be sitting in smoke screens occasionally and being able to see torpedoes coming is really, really handy. But that's where the uh, the gimmick comes in. This thing actually has a smoke screen. It's not a super long duration smoke screen, but it's not a short duration smoke screen. This thing is going to get a lot of DPM from smoke and it is stupid. <laughs> it is absolutely busted. But it also gets heals because why not just give this thing everything? It's got sonar or D uh, DFAA. It's got smoke and it's got heals because you got to give it everything. But that's not all, folks. <laughs> we are running the Epic Battle Booster for a little bit faster movement speed, a little bit faster cooldown on our consumables, and a little bit better main battery range. Now, a lot of people ask me, Spartan, why don't you play boosters on your ships? This is about the only booster that I ever need because I simply play the game a lot, so I don't need to run like a lot of XP and stuff. Now, if I'm grinding out a line, sure, I'll run credit boosters or Epic uh, or or XP boosters, but if I'm not grinding a line, it doesn't do me any good to run these, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, so when it comes down to it, Epic Battle Booster comes in real handy for these ships. Uh, it'll give you a little bit extra range, a little bit better movement speed, a little bit faster cooldown on your consumables. We are running the Italian Unity flag because it kind of if you squint just right, looks like a Spartan helmet. And then the Blazing Dread camo that comes with the ship, which is freaking fire every pun intended <laughs> i know stupid joke but still all right let's let's get into the, the the meat and potatoes of it most of the stats are relatively similar to the suja you have 34,200 hit points with a 10 percent torp reduction so don't be eating torps in this thing okay also 34,200 hit points is not a lot of hit points okay keep that in mind uh this is tier seven like you got ships out there like the georgia full full damage build is capable of a single citadel beyond 10 kilometers being close to like 30,000 damage or a little over 30,000 damage nowadays so 30 34,000 hit points is not a lot so you don't want to be taking hits all right unless you absolutely have to but uh the guns more than make up for it you got 15 150 uh 155 millimeter third year type guns Okay, same guns as the Suja. You get 15 of them. They reach out to 18.2 kilometers with this build. They re their base reload with this build is 8.1 seconds, which is silly. Okay, yes, it's a light cruiser. That's a little bit slower than, say, some of the other light cruisers, but it's the fire chance, folks. The fire chance is what busts this ship wide open. Because of Azure Lane Otago, you have a 23% chance to set fires with a light cruiser, which is stupid. All right, it's stupid. But 180 degree turn time with this build. Remember, we do have some some nerfs to our, our traverse because of our build. But 30.3 seconds. It's basically battleship style uh, 180 degree turn time. Which for a light cruiser that needs to juke once in a while, not the most ideal scenario. Okay? But you can work around it. Alright? That's why the ship can turn. You can turn the ship to get the guns on target a little bit quicker. HE shell maximum damage is a poultry 2530 with a 23% chance to set fires, which again is stupid. To put that into perspective, the 8 inch guns on the Mogamis and such are 25% chance with the same build. So only 2% nerfed for the, uh, the, the freaking ridiculously slow firing eight inch guns of the Japanese. So these are fire breathing monsters. Okay. There is no other way to put it. AP 
AP maximum damage 3564 if you have to get into a gunfight with uh, cruisers and stuff and they go broadside for sure load the AP. Uh, you can get all nine guns from the front of the ship at a decent angle so uh, you just try to stay relatively bow in. Uh, because there is some armor issues with this ship as well. We'll go over that as you'd expect. There are some weaknesses, but you do have 610 millimeter quadruple launch torpedo tubes. You get 16 of them, two quad launchers per side of the ship. This is nothing new for these Japanese cruisers, but they have horrendous firing angles on these torps. So these are a kiting cruiser. They are also very slow, but... With this build, they are pretty sneaky. So, 109 second reload time on these torps. So, not the fastest reload, but still under two minutes. Uh, 180 degree turn time, nobody cares about on torpedoes because they're always immediate. Uh, maximum damage of 17,233. This seems a little bit low for torpedoes for these Japanese, but still, that is a truckload of damage. Uh, the detectability by sea seems a little bit high, but honestly... Given the, the speed of these, like the, I don't understand why it is so so high, but whatever. 1.5 kilometers uh, doesn't really matter. Most of the time, you're not going to really get a chance to use these unless people are chasing you down. They're more of a zoning style torpedo. You kind of dump them into gaps and stuff that you might see destroyers or battleships or something going into. But that's about it. 11 kilometer range, 56 knot torp speed. So very slow torps. Uh, 11 kilometers is pretty normal for Japanese torpedoes. Uh, AA defense, you don't really have a lot of AA. So that is one trade-off as well. Enterprise is going to eat these things for lunch. Uh, 13 millimeter type 93s, you get four of those doing seven damage per second at only 1.2 kilometers. That is literally a dude on the deck with a gun shooting up at a plane. Like he's just sitting there going, pitch, 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 pitch. That's it. That, that, that's your AA. Uh, then you've got 25 millimeter type 96 mod ones. You get eight of those doing 20 damage per second. They reach out to 3.1, which is not too shabby. And then the 127 millimeter type 89A1 dual purpose secondaries, you get eight of those reaching out to five kilometers and doing 40 damage per second. So again, not good. I did forget to talk about the secondaries. You do have 127 millimeter type 89A1s. You get eight of those reaching out to 5.2 kilometers, which is an extended range secondary for a cruiser, I believe. I could be wrong, but that seems a little bit high for most cruisers. But hey, is what it is. They reload in five seconds and they have a 16% chance because yes, Atago's perk also works for the secondary. So you have a 16% chance to set fires with these uh, five inch secondaries. But uh, anyway, back to the maneuverability, 35 and a half knots top speed, which is pretty nasty. Uh, it's not super fast, but it's definitely not slow. I mean, to put it into perspective, your Americans are only topping out at like 32. So it's, it's, it's right. Ab it's above average. I would say, uh, but especially given the, the size of these ships, they are big ships for what they are, but they have a lot of turrets. That's why they're so long. Uh, turning circle is actually very good for the length of the ship, I think. 750 meters, uh, I mean, it's still not quite as good as the South, South Dakota class battleships, but it's got a fantastic rudder shift. Again, you can buff it if you want, but I don't think you need to. I think going with propulsion mod and concealment is definitely going to be your best bet. Uh, and then, of course, talking about the concealment, with this build, we have a 10.6 kilometer detectability by sea, 6.6 .6 by air, 2 is always guaranteed, and 6 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Statistics, again, small sample size i get it it's only one game folks one game but the freaking you don't need a lot of games to understand what a ship like this is capable of uh but yeah it's it's nasty all right now the armor is where the ship struggles and that is the same for every japanese cruiser ever right now just like the suja you will like sometimes be overpinned because of the lack of armor right? Like it's just, it looks like you have an armor belt. You don't really have an armor belt. There's a little bit of a torque bulge there, but that's not going to protect you from anything. Any battleship caliber guns from 15 inches and above are going to overmatch everything on this ship, except for the Citadel. They don't overmatch the Citadel, but if you're deflecting things with your Citadel, you're probably going to have a bad time because this is very flat. As you can see, it's not angled really well. So any, any rounds that come in, you're probably going to be eating. Okay. So you want to dodge at all cost, right? You don't want to be taking rounds. But uh, yeah, it does have 25 millimeters everywhere. That's what the green is. So pretty much 25 mils everywhere, right? So again, anything 15 inches and above do overmatch you. So keep that in mind. 
get, I mean, it does have this little 12 millimeters of side plating, aka the torp bulge, but you're not deflecting anything. Battleships overmatch that. Anything overmatches that, really. I'm pretty confident cruisers overmatch it, so it doesn't matter. You're not deflecting anything off of that. And while it does look like you have an armor belt, don't trust it. That is simply your citadel. <laughs> you have an exposed citadel that reaches far above the waterline. So if you're taking rounds, you're probably getting citadeled. And even even uh, destroyers are capable of uh, citadel you considerably. So keep that in mind. We'll showcase a little bit of that uh, in our fight uh, as you guys see it. But uh, overview, guns aplenty, high number of main guns, you got 15 of them. We already talked about that. Fast, above average movement speed, again, uh, we talked about that as well. Agile, we also talked about that, above average ability to change direction, and that comes in handy. Now again, I can understand why some people might want to uh, buff the turret traverse to try to make these things a little bit more... Uh, usable DPM while dodging because you will you will absolutely outturn these turrets. So keep that in mind. Blazing Dread is a fearsome sight on the high seas. Her sides glow with an intense supernatural heat like overheated metal, ready to ignite anything it touches. Never before has a description been so apt for the ship. <laughs> it's as if the ship has a soul of her own, driven by an insatiable desire to surge forward and burn enemy vessels in her path. Again, perfect. That is what this ship is. It is a fire-breathing monster. Armed with powerful fire-starting guns, Blazing Dread is a force to be reckoned with, unleashing torrents of flames upon her foes and leaving nothing but smoldering wreckage in her wake. She entered service in 19... Or, I'm sorry, 2024, because it's fictional. But it's a Suja. Like I said, this is a Suja on crack folks it is that simple uh i do like the camo it, it's kind of a a little bit of an awkward texture angle lie that definitely needed a little bit of a more of a high def look to it considering i don't know maybe it's just the lighting but it kind of looks a little little off at times but i do like it i like the style uh it's kind of got that diablo diablo look to it but she nasty all right there is no other way to put it she's she is a nasty ship, and if you underestimate this ship's capabilities, you will regret it. This ship will murder you, slowly but surely. Death by a thousand ticks of DOT. <laughs> so with all of that being said, let's get to our gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on Land of Fire. It's like it was meant to be, folks. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. It's too good. So you guys know I only played one video or one game in this ship. Uh, again, this is one of those ships like we know the ship pretty well. It's a Suja. You've played Suja probably by now. It's it's busted. But this thing is even more busted. And we're about to demonstrate that in its entirety uh, right here, right now. Now, we have three destroyers against us. Only a single cruiser on uh, the enemy team, which just happens to be a Schroeder. And... Uh, you know, spoiler alert, it's going to be on our side. Uh, but there are plenty of battleships to farm, and uh, farm them we will. Now remember, we built into some range too, so look at the coverage that this ship has as we move into position. Now right off the bat, we do have an island, so we're going to move forward to that. You can see these torp angles, the textbook Japanese torp angles. Not quite as bad as Miyoko, but still Mogami, Suja, similar, uh, similar torp angles. They're not good. They are kiting torpedoes, right? As you're turning to run away, or if you want to drop torps into gaps and stuff to try to keep things at bay, that's when you use the torps. Um, but, with all of that being said, we are going to put ourselves in position right behind this little island. We're going to have our destroyer do his job, which is spot, and, and we're just going to sit here and farm uh, for a good por portion of this fight. Uh, right off the bat, you can see there is a BA Turpets here, and there's also a Jean Bart in the middle of the map. And so they become priority one and priority two for us. They are both in firing range for our ship. So we go ahead, we drop our smoke screen, making sure that we slow down. You can see I accidentally switched over to AP for a moment. But uh, don't be afraid of the AP. You can absolutely use it, but you don't need to. This is like a Conqueror. You have AP that's okay, 
but you don't need it. Now, our shard horse here, shard horse 43, he's going to do things uh, that aren't the brightest in the world, but as you'd expect out of a shard horse or any other German battleship armed with torpedoes, like a turpitz. But <laughs> they, they tend to be a little bit too aggressive for their own good. Now, we take a shot at the turpitz, we don't get a fire, we do end up shooting at the Jean Bart, we get the fire, and this is where we have to teach you guys about Cruiser 101. Spread the love, folks. You don't just farm one target until they're dead, okay? You, you shoot a target, you get a fire, you move on to another target if you can, you get a fire. Now, yes, you want to try to get rid of people, that is absolutely crucial, but the more people you can affect, the better, right? So, the more fires you can get going, the more damage you're going to get. It, it, it's simple math, right? But uh, we are going to try to sit in our smoke screen for as long as possible, but you can see we're already running out of our smoke. So we're going to have to be a little bit smarter here. We're going to have to try to use the island a little bit better, but we are going to get another shot off here before we end up getting behind the island. And you can see, do I just sit here? No, there's a Schroeder nearby. So we're going to put ourselves in a position to start to kite. This is what this ship, this is the bread and butter of the Japanese Navy, right? Now I do load an AP salvo for the Schroeder. I was hoping that he would he would turn broadside for us. He doesn't end up doing so. Uh, so we're not going to get much out of that. We do get a little bit of penetration showing that the, the AP is absolutely there. And that's why we have the, the AP multiplier and all that stuff with the punch through. But HE is your bread and butter, right? And uh, with the slow turret traverse, you will find situations like this where you flip from one side to the other. It's not ideal for you. But uh, you, you can keep the, the DPM rolling with the, the fires going down range. Now, we've only set three fires up this point. We haven't really gotten... Well, make that four. <laughs> we haven't really gotten a lot of fires yet. But again, when you're playing these cruisers, these fire-breathing monsters, it's simply a matter of time, right? You get enough shells on target, things are gonna burn. And with a high fire chance, like 23%, and you've got 15 guns, you are going to be a flamethrower. So we know that the, the Shard Horse is targeting the secondaries, one of the BA, uh, the BA turpits. So uh, we just go ahead and start working on the, the Massachusetts. Now we've gotta be very careful here. There are two battleships uh, that are well within their range to, to shoot me. So we got to be very careful. Now we did shatter six or six shells on the, the Massachusetts. Probably hit his turret if I had to guess. You can see some AP coming in from the enemy uh, Schroeder. And then we just do some area denial torpedoes into the gap just in case these guys decide to push in. Right now they're 15 kilometers away, but if they change course and start to push because I'm kiting away and there's really nothing here to hold them back, then you can see how quickly they could uh, run into these torpedoes. And it's the perfect perfect screen right you just kind of set them out there and look at the accuracy that has death written all over it fortunately i'd already changed course a long time ago so i don't have to worry about it now here we are trying to get the perma fires on the massachusetts so we take one more salvo we do get a perma fire and now we are going to move to trying to help with the the split um these shells are not the floatiest shells in the world. So aiming at destroyers is actually surprisingly easy. Even at medium to long range, uh, you can land decent hits. Now, obviously first shot didn't get there, but the second shot should do much better. Uh, but there's a Velos and a split here. That's two gunboats plus a radar, uh, plus the Schroeder secondaries. Our poor guy in the Velos was never gonna survive that, right? Uh, so at this point, we have no choice but to move back. But you can see that we're about to get our smoke screen back, right? And if you look on the map, our team is actually heading into a position where they can potentially keep things spotted for us. So I am requesting support because the majority of the enemy team is here. But you can see I get a double fire there. I mean, Massachusetts is going to put that out. You know it's going to happen. He immediately puts out the double fire. And so now we just keep the fire or keep the HE rolling until this man is burning again. And uh, we're not the only one shooting him with HE. There's another cruiser over there. He's shooting HE. The two battleships are shooting at this guy. I mean, it's just a matter of time. He's going to go down. And it's about this point where I decide we're going to slow down. Uh, well, I say about this point. There's our perma fire that we were looking for. But uh, you can see the shells coming in from the Massachusetts, easily dodged. Uh, and it's at this point we decide, now that we're okay, to go ahead, drop our smoke screen, uh, immediately break contact from those people that are chasing us. And as they turn in to chase, we pick up our Witherer medal, medal as well. And as they turn to chase our team, I mean, we just get to sit here and farm again. And you can see, I'm just going to drop some torpedoes off the pole, 
just in case any of those destroyers come out of the cap. And then now that we know that we got the double fire permanently on the Massachusetts, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get the same thing going on the, the BA Turpins. Again, spreading that love. You don't want to just sit there and, and hit the same people over and over and over and over and over again if you've got other targets. If it's a target-rich environment, you want to try to pick up everything. And these shells are nasty as we end up getting our first assist medal of the game, as well as putting ourselves in position to pick up the kill but nope, the Turpins ends up going down to a friendly Anult, so we end up getting the uh, assist medal there too. But now this Schroeder is in a world of trouble, but we are also in a world of trouble real soon. As he pushes closer to us, we know that his secondaries are no joke. The secondaries on the Schroeder are particularly dangerous to, er, to cruisers, as well as destroyers, but, but particularly to cruisers because of their, their accuracy. Uh, they can they can put a lot of damage on target real quick with their with those secondaries. So we don't want to sit here inside secondary range too long. Uh, we do want to try to get as much damage on them as possible, getting those fires. Remember, cruisers don't usually run fight fire with fire on anything. Usually cruiser builds don't have the fight fire with fire perk. So we can sit here and burn this man to the ground without worrying about him getting his damage control back anytime soon. But as you can see, these secondaries are no joke. We're going to drop some torps, assuming that he's going to potentially turn and run. Uh, we drop the torps off, spreading them out a little bit, and we're just going to use the rear guns. There's no reason for us to try to get all of our guns on target. We can use the rear guns here, try to just maintain some damage downrange. If we get the opportunity, we will use the front guns as well. But the main thing is get out of the secondary range and then stay angled to the armor-piercing shells of the Schroeder. Remember, Schroeder's AP is not very good against battleships, but by God, if you're a cruiser, it is devastating. So we got to be very careful against that AP. But as soon as he starts to engage, you can see where his turrets are looking. As soon as he tries to engage elsewhere, he's going to uh, he, he's going to try to like run away, right? So we just farm him even more, getting some more fires. And then, of course, you can see the damage that we're taking from this Velos that's in the smoke screen here, using AP, and smartly using AP. But we get a second fire, he puts that out, and now he's trying to get away from us. He's 14.3 kilometers. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that, you know, cruisers have a, a short duration uh, damage control, right? Like, it almost always goes immediately from damage control into cooldown. So if we can get one fire here, you can see we just fired the rear guns at him, but 23% chance to set fire, six rounds downrange, and out of four shells, we get a fire. I mean, it's guaranteed, basically. But with that fire, he's going to go down, and look at where I'm headed already. Am I turning to continue to run away? Absolutely not. Yes, there are battleships left that need to be farmed. Yes, if you're a farming uh, cruiser, that seems to be the play, but... We've already sent a set of smokes or a set of torps into the smoke screen, and with the uh, destroyer in the smoke screen, we know that we can use this to try to close the distance on the velos. We know it's velos because it's the only thing left. So we push forward. He comes out of a smoke screen, and it's just a matter of time. Remember, we're not the slowest, slowest cruiser on the planet, right? So it's just a matter of time. We do get within spotting range of him. He gets uh, he gets lit up. We're going to go ahead and hit him with the front guns. And remember, you don't get all of the front guns. You don't get all nine guns over the over the bow of the ship. But if you turn a little bit, you can get all of your guns on target. And despite the fact that this guy can absolutely tear us up with the AP, it's a, it's a war of, of DPM versus uh, hit points. And I have far more hit points than he does. And our DPM is way higher. So I'm pretty confident I can win this. So we don't even bother trying to angle here. Even if he does Citadel us, it's not the end of the world. He's just simply not got the hit points or the DPM to outlast us. And look at the damage that we're able to put on target. And so he's going to go down. He's going to fire one more shot. Like he just kind of lost heart there for a little bit. But he does get another 800 damage before he dies. And I mean, this is what this thing is, right? Like this thing is just what you've seen. There's no, like, special, like, way to play this. This is simply a kiting, HE spamming cruiser. It's, the, it's, like, the simplest thing to play in the world. You get smoke screens, too, so if you use those smokes properly, you can absolutely ruin enemy teams. Now, thankfully, the Iwami on the enemy team decided he wants to get into the cap. So uh, we're going to move ourselves over here to the B cap, try to spot him. There's not much time left on the clock, unfortunately. The, uh, the... Uh, clock is about to or not the clock but the the timer or 
points is about to run out. Sorry, God, I can't talk. But the points are about to run out. And so it's just a matter of time. We just want to get as much damage as possible. Uh, gotta, once again, we got to be careful. If Wami has AP loaded, he could definitely depth strike us at any moment. So we're, we're still going to play smart despite the game being over. But we are going to try to farm as much damage as humanly possible. Uh, he's going to damage control that fire, which is unfortunate, but expected. Um, and then, of course, we just keep, fire, just keep farming him. Uh, as no matter how much damage he thinks that he can get away with, there's another permafire. So we're just going to keep just keep farming. This is what the ship is. He shoots at us, and of course he's got HE loaded, right? Why wouldn't he have HE loaded in his Japanese Tier 8 battleship, top tier battleship? If you're running HE in an Awami or an, a Musashi or a uh, Yama, like, that, you're, you're the problem, right? Like, you have no room to complain about anybody. But, uh, yeah, so, easy game, 168,000 damage, 340 targets hit, a Witherer and a high cow. Uh top of the leaderboard for sure, 3,448 base XP, first game ever in this ship. Uh, now, again, small sample size, but again, this is one of those ships, you don't need a lot of games to realize what this ship is capable of. Any veteran player that gets in this thing is going to be a terror. Anybody that's, uh, you know, marginally good at, or like, got more than two brain cells, can probably get into ship and do reasonably well. Um, but I'm sure there will be potatoes that come out there and get caught going into their smoke screen or outrunning their smoke screen and get caught broadside and get dev struck. But for the most part, this is a pretty nasty ship. So I don't ever tell you guys how to spend your money. I just give you guys the facts and let you guys make up your own decisions. But this thing's pretty nasty. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.